watching Beyond Market. Welcome. I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show, we're continuing our com series on the conversations leading to Nigeria's 2019 elections. This time around, we'll discuss some concerns raised by Nigeria's former president, Ulusha Basanjo, as well as the realities facing Nigerian voters ahead of the February elections. You can join the conversation with, uh, just connect with us on Twitter at CNBC Africa. You can also send tweets to my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awini. You can also use the hashtag Beyond Market and Nigeria Decide 410. Now, former Nigerian President Olusegun Obasanjo recently raised some concerns about the state of democracy in the country and the integrity of the Independent National Electoral Commission to conduct free, fair and credible elections in February. President, former President Obasanjo also compared the current administration to that of the Abacha era. Martin Anuva, former presidential candidate of the National Conscience Party, joins me to share his thoughts on the state of politics in the country. Martin, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you very much. Quite interesting how things are unfolding in Nigeria's political sphere. We've had this another letter from President, former President Obasanjo, and just, you know, I was t telling you earlier, uh, just uh, yesterday also we had a press conference from the Minister of Information, you know, also raising concerns about what acting on uh, or based on some intelligence reports that the uh, government has received on matters relating to security ahead of the 2019 elections. But I wanted to start with former President Obasanjo's letters, 15 pages long. What, what are your thoughts and what are those issues that he raised that you would say are most or biggest concern to you? Well, um, elections in Nigeria are a big issue, a very big issue, uh, and they have been since independence. So uh, it's not strange that we are having these issues uh, right now. Chief Dr. Basanjo has made remarks which are mostly accurate and statesmanly because he, it is his responsibility as the leading African statesman to prevent problems before they occur. And he has highlighted the issues that could cause serious problems. You don't want uh, the former situation we had in Rwanda. You don't want uh, the situation we had in Kenya before. Elections really, or in Zimbabwe, where elections led to serious uh, national crisis. That sets you back security-wise. That sets you back economy, economic, uh, economically. So it's better to prevent these things before they arise. So Chief Dr. Basanjo has acted uh, in the most statesmanly way. And the points he made are clear to everybody. I mean, let those who disagree with him show one sentence that's not correct. It's not about saying he's a corrupt man, he's a stupid man. If he's a corrupt man and you haven't convicted him in uh, three and a half years, it shows you're even more corrupt. So these uh, baseless uh, tags that anybody who disagrees with you is corrupt, when it is known and confirmed, that this is the most corrupt government ever in the history of Nigeria. You know, he, does, he did make, raise some uh, interesting points and issues, starting with INEC, the ability of INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, to conduct free and fair elections. This always comes up every time we have an election cycle in Nigeria. We always have voices who come up to say, you know, we're not sure, we're not confident, you know, in the ability of INEC to conduct elections in a credible manner. Uh, but we're having these conversations and, you know, concerns again. And I'm just wondering, what is, briefly, as you understand, as you read the situation, what exactly is the problem? I must put a background, because it's not like these problems are new. These problems are deliberately created and deliberately defended by the beneficiaries of the iniquities. In 2015, when I ran for president, two weeks before the elections, I granted an interview to a national newspaper, and I said the election had been pre-rigged. And the outcome had been predetermined. And it was clear. At the end of the day, 14 million people were directly disenfranchised with impunity. 10 million, 13 million votes came by incident uh, forms. So that does not guarantee that the voter was authentic. Now, with that kind of data, 13 plus 10, that's already 23. How many million votes were cast? About 30 million votes. And 23 are in question. 23 million. And the media went to uh, agog. Free and fair election. Or oh, even foreign observers. Foreign observers in Nikon Noga 
And you know, b before elections take place. Uh, no, 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 excuse me, because this, this needs to be established. We can't cover these problems and then they repeat for, for, for 50 years. These problems need to be known and they need to be dealt with. I hear you. you. We, we had 1.9 million votes in Kano, no void vote. 1.9? You know, when we're talking about the rule of law, yeah. let me, just yes. allow me just a moment, talking about the rule of law, you know, people can come out and make certain statements, but the thing is, at the end of the day, there's a rule of law. We have courts. Mm -hmm. There's a judiciary for did you, you Did you redress. go to the elections for the purpose of going to court? Do you mess this studio for the purpose of sweeping it? So in the event that there's you a You prevent out, problems. Yes. But in and the that event is what Obasanjo has done. In the done. event that that is not the outcome. Oh, you go to court. Yeah. Oh, agreed. But what do you expect the courts to do? Because what the courts do, it's also in the law the courts determine the impact on society. So when you have two evils, the courts choose a lesser evil, and politicians know that. Okay, let's circle back, <laughs> let's, let's circle back to what President, uh, former President uh, Basinger's uh, point is making here, the fact that he's not confident in, in INEC. And I know that INEC has come out several times to defend their position to, and to guarantee and reassure Nigerians. And, and I'm just thinking, at the bottom line of this, many analysts say, look, Let's move ahead with the elections, and let's have the elections in the first place. That's what I'm telling you. That is the principle of lesser evil. That doesn't make it right. It is a principle of lesser evil, which so all of us can, accept. So what can we do now? What you Everybody can do saying now... We're not confident, so what no, can we do now? Chief Dr. Basanjo also told you, if you read that letter, what you need to do. Use the card reader to authenticate not only the card, but also the voter. And he wrote it there. Where does that, that does not work, no voting. You see, you can't understand what the man is saying if you do not understand what the issues are. He says, those who cannot be authenticated through the card reader, sorry, who? And their own card readers also get authenticated because there are two steps. First, the machine recognizes your card reader. Secondly, the machine recognizes that you are the owner of the card. Uh, card. Because otherwise, if you're just checking the cards, I can go with your card. And that you have, you have these stories of missing cards. You have these stories of people not able to collect their cards. You have these stories of police and buying people's cards. So these things have been arranged. Why should we keep quiet and allow it to flow? We must disrupt it. Let's move on to what's also playing out on the political field here. Uh, accusations and counter accusations, especially between the main political parties, the APC, the ruling APC, and the PDP. I mentioned earlier that there was a press conference yesterday by the Minister of Information, uh, Mr. Lyon Mohammed, where he said that the government has intelligence reports that you know some people, some elements are trying to foment trouble, uh, attack, make, conduct attacks in some certain parts of the country, and also attacks on senior government officials. What do you make of that that press conference and the statements that were made? Well, the first thing you have to look at is who said it. Before you look at what he said, you have to look at the message. You have to look at the messenger. If you choose to believe Lyon Mohammed. That's your choice. I choose not to believe Lai Mohammed. Lai Mohammed is the same person who told us that the president was not sick, and the president said he had never been this sick in his life. So are we going to count how many times Lai Mohammed has deliberately misled us? If you choose to believe Lai Mohammed, that's your right. I choose not to believe Lai Mohammed. Secondly, let's look at the message. Opposition trying to cause violence, and you are aware. What capacity has the opposition to cause violence? Who has been causing violence in the past? The ruling party had a rally in Lagos State. How many people died? Who got stabbed? Who stabbed who? It was the ruling party members against the ruling party uh, members in violence. So where is the source of violence? The source of violence is the ruling party. These are diversionary tactics. Chief Dr. Basanjo has pointed at the rigging plan which we have been shouting before, but the media won't list it. There's a rigging plan that we know about. And that rigging plan was not developed last night. It has been deliberately planned, reviewed, approved, and it is being most deliberately implemented. And it will be irresponsible for us to keep quiet. You know, while all of this is playing out, and we're going to talk about some other issues, we still have some time left. I want to ask you this, in the midst of all of this, what is this, I mean, if we uh, can all just take a step back and just look at how things are unfolding within the political space, what does this say about how far we've come with our democracy? We keep referring to Nigeria's democracy as a fledging democracy. What does that say about how far we've come 
with well, democracy? Well, the culture of democracy has not been accepted, clearly, even by the people. Because don't forget that the people follow their leadership. If the leadership does not accept the culture of democracy, the people will not accept it. Subconsciously, the people follow the leadership. So what is happening? What is happening is that we have a situation where the treasurer of the Lagos State, listen to my words, we have videos, treasurer of Lagos State, National Union of Road Transport Workers, went to Oshun State and after the election claimed that they delivered Oshun, he's the treasurer in Lagos. So it's not the votes that counted. We have that on video. So they delivered the elections, which is why I'm not running. Because I ran in 2015, and all the alarm that I raised, everything everybody knows is correct. Everybody kept quiet. Why should I be wasting my time and my resources? That's why I'm not running. Now, we have that on video in Oshun, saying that we have delivered Oshun. And he also said in that video, we're going to deliver Kwara. So we know that they deliver the election. Your votes don't count. I said so. I have run elections severally in this country. Severally. It's not once that I ran elections. Votes do not count, and votes must count. And that is the real issue here. And that is what Chief Dr. Basanjo is saying. Let votes count. Let us know that this PVC is authentic, and the voter is authentic. Because otherwise, what if I clone PVCs? Is that impossible? What was the treasurer of the National Union of Road Transport in Lagos State doing in Oshun? What temerity did he have? When he's not an INEC official to say that they delivered Oshun, what's the meaning of that? And you heard what Chief Dr. Basajo referred to that election, the Oshun election in that letter. So these are clear facts known by everybody, but the media pretends not to know. Because if the, the media, mainstream media establishments like yours, had their editorial opinion based on facts, this rubbish will be checked. But you say you're being balanced, you put up a lie against the truth, and you confuse the public. Let's what are the hard facts? We have videos. Martin, yes. thank you for your th time so far, but we'll take a quick break and I'll be right back to pick up from where we left off. I've been speaking to Martin Inovo. He's a former presidential candidate of the National Conscience Party, and we have been talking about uh, how things are unfolding within Nigeria's political space. We'll continue our conversation right after the break to join us again. <laughs> Welcome back to Beyond Market. Still with me today on the show is Martin Inovo, former presidential candidate of the National Conscience Party, and we're taking a look at unfolding events in Nigeria's political space. Martin, thank you for your time so far. Let's thank you very much. Let's quickly talk about the presidential uh, deba the debates we've been having. We've had a governorship debate uh, here in Lagos, and we've had the, the presidential debate that didn't quite go as well as you know, we had all expected. We didn't have President Buhari attending, and the, the main opposition party candidate from the main Opposition party, Mr. Atuko Bubaka, declined, even though we did hear that he was at the venue. What's, what was your, or is your reading of that, of how that played out? Leadership requires vision. You need to see beyond now. We said clearly that General Buhari will not attend the debates. We don't work with him, but we know he will not attend. All you need is to have some common sense and to use it. Everybody knows that General Buhari, since he became president, has never stood for one hour. The record is that he stood for 45 minutes. I was in the 2015 presidential debate. I stood right next to the incumbent president, Dr. Jonathan. We all stood for two hours. There was no sitting break. President Jonathan stood for two hours. Professor Shonaya stood for two hours, the woman. We all stood there for two hours. Nobody sat down for one minute. And you think that's the reason why he didn't attend? That's one of the reasons. Second reason is you saw what happened at the town hall meeting. He has an agenda which has been accused of, which is not patriotic. And he's living up to that agenda if you look at his actions. And some of his words, like the 95%, uh, 97% versus 5% uh, theory he proposed. This is nothing. Nobody proposed this for him. He proposed it himself which goes contrary to his oath of office, sworn on the Koran. So he has a clear agenda which he's not able to conceive. And because of that, he cannot articulate a national vision. So it will be wrong for his handlers to allow him to come there. We knew he would not come. We said he would not come. This date was fixed more than a month ago. 
How is it that the new excuse is that he had a scheduled clash? The date was fixed. The date for the debate was fixed more than a month ago. So we know what is right. We can't continue to pretend and then encourage unproductive discussions. We need to discuss what is blood or controversial, not what is clear. We saw him at the town hall meeting. The, the vice president clearly disgraced him by not letting him answer any question. Show him through his body language and through a question will be asked to the president, the vice president will jump in. So he was trying to shield the man, and he knew that the man was going to disgrace the, the, the party. Why would you push a 77-year-old this far? When I'm 77, I'm not going to be in that place. In 2023, he's going to be 81, according to him. And that's who you want for president? Let's quickly talk about... Come on. Let's quickly talk about the other political parties, apart from the two in focus, APC and the PDP. We've had, we had other political parties, and we had some other can candidates coming up for the first time, the likes of uh, Fela Jirutoye, uh, but this time we also have uh, Obie Zekwesili and some other names. And there have been several conversations about them forming a major coalition, uh, one big party, as it were, to create, as some have called it, a good third, uh, another big, a a, a credible a force. third I, I was force, part of, I was third, part of it, yes. third option for Nigerians. And that hasn't quite also played out well. What are your thoughts in terms of how uh, that has progressed and concerns that were raised that uh, those parties, they couldn't, there wasn't exactly unity among them? Clearly to come together and just, you know, fuel just one candidate. So at the end of the day, we don't have a split. What are your thoughts on that? I was in the National Political Summit conveyed by uh, the Red Card Movement over that. So I participated. I'm the right person to ask. Okay. Uh, there is a trust issue among Nigerians. And there's also the individualistic uh, issues where people don't want to use objective criteria and accept that they may not be the best option. So that played out. Those are cultural issues. And uh, that also encouraged me not to go on. Because to confront the abuse of power by the incumbent, you need enormous capacity and resources. So if you had a thought force that aggregated everybody else, that would be strong enough to confront the incumbent. And that is the idea you saw in CUPP, where you have right now 50-something parties trying to push uh, the candidacy of uh, Elijah Bubaka Tiku. That's the right thing to do. Because the ruling party in Nigeria is very strong. Because the constitution of Nigeria makes the president of Nigeria the most powerful president in the world. He holds five positions. Head of state, head of government, chairman federal executive council, president and commander in chief of the armed forces. It makes him very powerful. And it was deliberately done. And people like us supported it when it was done. Because the whole idea was to empower a president to push development. Now you empower a president and he pushes against development. <laughs> so that, that, is, that is the tragedy we have seen. It was deliberately done that when we give so much power to the president, he will be able to push a national agenda. Now we gave him a, so much power and they're using it to push against the national agenda. For well, the electorate themselves, are watching how things are unfolding, and this time, I mean, we have so many other candidates, well, uh, other options, as it were. How do you think they're also interpreting what's going on from your interactions with another young active player? I think we have to be practical. Uh, we were 14 in 2015. I, I'd like to give an example. Mm -hmm. And what did uh, the national debate uh, group do? They put us in two groups, seven in each group. Nice idea. Now you have 73. So even if you put 7-7 seven, seven per group, you're going to have 11 groups. So the number is a little bit untoward. Now you can, based on acceptable objective criteria, screen. For example, I gave one indication. I said any political party that has its national chairman as its presidential candidate is a one-man briefcase party. Disregard them. If you can't find somebody, you, you only have one person for every position. You are not a political party for a country of 200 million people. If you are so power-centered that you cannot reason with one additional person, how can you reason with 200 million Nigerians? So if they had used objective criteria transparently, that would have helped. Because one of the problems with the debate you're talking about is what was the criteria for selecting the five? Was it alphabetical order? Was it number of candidates? You should inform me. You belong to the media. You're supposed to inform and educate me. If you don't know the criteria, I shouldn't know. 
Because I'm not a candidate in this election. I was a candidate before. So these are the, what will I say, clandestine things they do to promote their own favored candidates. Why will a candidate of PPN, Dr. Al Mustafa, be excluded? In record, they have one of the top five highest number of candidates for the election. So you need to be clear with your criteria. We need to know this criteria. And the way it is now. And as doesn't anybody, why hasn't anybody, I know that there have been, some of these have been challenged, but we don't, we never see the end of it. IPAC, IPAC, Inter-Party Advisory uh, Committee, has challenged the appointment of Amina Zakari. Has anybody listened? Because there's a deliberate plan. It is developed, it is reviewed, deliberate to rig this election, and the outcome, let the heavens fall, will come out only one way. Do you think that the Amina Zakari controversy is going to, will continue throughout the elections? Do you think that it will continue to cast that doubt, cast shadow? Chief Dr. Obasanjo just still raised it. Yeah, I know, I know, I saw that in the Al Haji Bubba Galadima is a Buhari's a political soulmate. He was national secretary of Buhari's CPC. So, Alaji Bala Guba Galima has said this is not acceptable and it will not be acceptable to us. Do you foresee me looking down the road at the end of these elections? Because we, we got to that road in 2015 where people began to wonder and ask themselves when we get to when the outcome of the when we get the outcome of the results, will those who did not win take it in good faith? Why would anyone the, accept what is wrong just, in good faith? Just a, just a moment, because all of that has to be proven in the first place. But just a moment. You need a when, proof when, of Amina Zakari. When, There's when an admission we, by the president that they are related by birth, by president. When we get to that road, do you, do, you, by do you fear that, or do you, what do you foresee in terms of how this could play out the outcome? Are we going to find ourselves in a situation where uh, we have the, those who didn't win, you know, just, how do I put it, making, heating up the polity as it were? What do you mean by heating up the polity? Fighting oh, for justice that. cannot be heating up the polity. Use the right expressions. No. When we get to that road, are we going to find ourselves in a situation where our democracy, the very foundations of our democracy, will be threatened? Oh, clearly. They are being threatened right now. The point where we'll be in crisis. They are being threatened right now because when you arrange this kind of skewed electoral process, very skewed, from the very beginning, each stage has been skewed in favor of the ruling party. Appointment of uh, INEC officials skewed in favor of the ruling party. Contrary to the precedents, do you have time? I will count the precedents. Why isn't you. anybody going to court challenging all of this? If you go to court, the time you spend in court, will, the, the election will be finished before you oh, come out of court. The, I mean, if we are operating the rule, under the rule of law. Yeah, but under the rule the, of law, that the, is the, the option. You that also have a timeline for the election. Why do you have to go to court over every issue? So what else, what else would you do? Why, why would you have to go? To, no, you can take uh, this kind of political action. What do you mean? The people who protested uh, in, in Venezuela, there are no courts there. It's, you look at your options. You weigh which one will achieve your result within time. Yeah, After all, even in law... I, I say that because of the rules of democracy. When the rules of democracy, democracy are not yes, protest. You, yeah, of course, you so can protest. We, protest, but to what end? You keep protesting. The rules of democracy allow advocacy. Yes, obviously. Uh -huh. The rules of democracy allow... Uh, uh, advancing your own positions, which is what we're doing. So which and, the, and these are positions that are universal. So protests, going to court, yeah. and continuous protests. Yes, and you, okay. you can use all. Okay. So, but, wait, I mean, for the election, what are, what are your hopes? What, what are your expectations? I mean, I know what your concerns are. The way are, INEC is going, Nigeria is set to waste $242 billion in a charade. In a charade, an empty hoax. This needs to be checked before it is too late. We have over three weeks to correct ourselves. Chief Dr. Basanjo has said exactly what needs to be done. We need to remove underage voting. Okay. We need to remove multiple voting. We need to remove voting by proxy. We need to remove disenfranchisement, direct disenfranchisement. Martin, we're going to have to leave it there. We're actually out of time. Thank you so much for your time today and, of course, sharing your perspective and thoughts on how things are playing out on Nigeria's, uh, in Nigeria's political sphere. I've been speaking to you, Martin Inova. He's a former presidential candidate of the National Conscience Party. Well, that's our show for today. You can always watch uh, all previous episodes of Beyond Market on our website at cnbcafrica.com and you can stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Market. You can also follow my Twitter handle, too, at Esther O. Awoni. For myself and the team, do have a wonderful evening. <laughs>